Mm. Yo, what's Gucci with it? YouTube, Veterans Military, back again with another banger. Today, we're going to be talking about how to effectively use disability benefits questionnaires, DBQs, and nexus letters or independent medical opinions to set up for new VA disability claims as well as secondary VA disability claims. Y'all like this type of content? As always, like, share, subscribe, comment down below. If you've done this, and let's let's jump into this. Let's jump into the matrix. Ah! So first of all, you can utilize any type of medical evidence for any new claims, increase the claims in which you are trying to obtain. And possibly it could work for presumptive conditions as well for all VA disability claims. But let's just start off with an example. You know, uh, you're going for a back exam for lumbosacral strain or for cervical strain. You have very little evidence for sciatica, radiculopathy in either your upper extremities or your lower extremities. However, you go into that compensation and pension exam, it's at least 30 to 40 minutes. That means you know that doctor's writing shit down. They're writing all the details, any complaints. That single complaint can go a long way, especially if that compensation and pension examiner notes that, hey, yeah, I did a physical or diagnostic test. Physical, obviously, they're touching, they're pressing, you know, they're pressing on your stomach or your back, on your cervical, you know, all that stuff, on your spine and stuff like that, to physically see if there's any pain upon manipulation. On top of that, if it's severe enough, they'll order an x-ray, hopefully an MRI, because the MRI is going to capture a whole lot more than just an x-ray, especially when it comes to something like sciatica, radiculopathy, uh so you go in there initially for just cervical strain or low back pain. And in this examination, you're complaining about, yeah, I do have sensations or frequent issues with radiculopathy, with sciatica. It's caused, you know, sometimes it goes to the left leg, left arm. Sometimes it goes to the right. It might be both. And the same goes for lower extremities as well, being secondary to your back. Also, if you have any mental health disabilities that is being caused by your cervical strain or low back pain, that could be a time to bring it up. What's what's going on? They're asking you, you know, a vague question. How's your day going? How, how are you being? How do you deal with this disability on a day to day basis? You know, does that include physical therapy? Does that include crying in a corner? Does that include not being able to pick up your kids anymore? Not being able to pick up your spouse, you know, go to pound town. You know, I'm talking about whatever the case may be. If it's causing you mental distress, bring it up. If it's causing you secondary pains, if your low back pain is causing hip issues, knee issues, bring it up during that exam. And once that exam is finalized, it's been submitted to the VA, get a copy of your dbq and your imo it's pretty much everything that the that examiner needs to submit to the va on your behalf to first get you service connected or get you denied if you're missing some information you more than likely you're gonna get a denial but if you had everything going into that exam and then you gave that examiner a little bit more it could set you up for new claims secondary disabilities as well as a potential increase in the future for that specific disability i'm just saying i'm just saying you know it's not hard to obtain this if you're working with a vso well only if you're working with a veteran service officer or accredited claims agent someone who has access to vbms the veterans benefit management system you'll then be able to utilize them to go into the system and pull that dbq that imo that that va rater that va examiner has submitted to the va and you can check you know on va.gov because i know y'all checking every day <laughs> i was there i know y'all still there checking va.gov <laughs> and e-benefits every day see if there's been any status updates we can take mine for example i went in on a denied previously denied lumbosacral strain for my back and on that denied claim i added sciatica radiculopathy in both lower extremities as well as I had a lot of medical evidence documentation setting up for a future secondary my cervical strain in case I didn't get 100% permanent total during that those rounds of claims. 
So I went into my compensation and pension exam. The exam was about 45 minutes to an hour. And the examiner, she was really thorough. She was writing everything down, typing everything down, my bad, on the DBQ because, like I said, I don't play around. When I went into the exam, I had everything I, I submitted specifically for this disability because I was previously denied. So obviously, I'm going to get I'm going to get service connected this time. I learned my lessons. Lessons learned. Just like in the military, after every training event, after every deployment, every training exercise, you have a lessons learned, you know, a meeting, a get together, a package, a document that's developed. Lessons learned. What did I learn? from my previous claim that I can apply, learn from, and make better going into this new claim. Obviously, I'm gonna put personal statement, medical evidence, MRI, X-ray, whatever the case may be. I just want for the, I, went, I pushed for the MRIs, even though my doctor, she wanted me to get X-rays. So I'm like, I mean, let, let's be honest, doc. I don't want no X-ray, I want an MRI. And you know, whatever the case may be. But it was still good medical evidence that's set up for my cervical strain went into that you know jumping back to the exam she was very thorough the examiner was very thorough she took all my measurements you know she pressed some stuff around and then she started asking me pretty much questions pertaining to my back you know my spine whatever the case may be and i let up like hey you know sometimes when i'm having low back issues sometimes i feel it in my neck you know and i get some type of you know radiculopathy in left or right arm mainly it's in the left not so much in the right but it is there whenever i'm having flare-ups from my low back obviously your low back is connected to your spine which your cervical strain is you know your cervical area is connected to the spine as well so if your low back pain is causing cervical pain causing hip pain complain about it you know yeah maybe that cp examiner is the first time you're complaining about it hopefully they capture it so then you can build medical evidence once that exam has been finalized and submitted to the VA and in that interim once you get a copy hopefully you request a copy of your disability benefits questionnaire independent medical opinion you can see what that doctor actually wrote down if everything is supporting okay cool they note that down they got that they say yeah you know that has some issues with cervical area during flare-ups they're having issues with mental health during day-to-day -day basis because they're not they can't be active anymore or they're less active so they gotta adjust their life to accommodate for the disability in which they have now you don't know talk about it's chess it ain't checkers you don't know talk about ah but that's how you do it that's how you dissect the dbq the imo in order to set yourself up for secondaries, for new disabilities. And especially if you got anything mental health and you currently don't have a mental health disability, there are zero to 100%, depending on your severity. Obviously, you're gonna need a diagnosis. But in these initial exams for any singular disability, you can set it up. If you're having migraines, that's a 50% if you meet the criteria. If your cervical strain is causing migraines, set it up. If you haven't gone to a doctor already, let that CMP exam be your first time complaining about it to set up for a secondary disability on top of the claim that you're already hopefully going to get service connected. Not checkers. You got to get into it. And I am doing some development, trying to create videos on special monthly compensation, on uh, combat related special compensation, as well as concurrent the other one it's pretty much if you're retired or if you're if you're retired or if you have a combat related disability how what will be the steps in order to obtain both va disability and retirement pay doing research on that it is a complicated process so doing research i will be pushing out a video hopefully in the next day or two we'll see you know what i'm talking about but i will be pushing out some good content uh 2024 year to vet whether you're trying to get 100% permanent total, motherfucking special monthly compensation, or if you're just here for the laughs and a good ride. Until next time, y'all know what time it is. This is motherfucking Debo. Y'all stay Gucci with it. Peace and love, baby.